Hi, my name is Rick Zepatini. I'm here at Jones Technical Institute in Jacksonville, Florida. Today I'm going to be showing you a few methods for picking up the secondary ignition pattern. The tools we're going to be utilizing today is we have a PC-based oscilloscope. This one's made by OTC. You can pick these up anywhere from 50, 60 bucks all the way up to several thousand dollars. It just depends on your budget and your requirements. Today this two-channel scope will work just fine. We're also going to be using the the uh, secondary inductive pickup that came with the scope. Normally how would you, you would use this? You would have a system like this. You would have a distributor, you would have some ignition coils, these would go to your spark plugs. You would simply take this and clamp it around one of the spark plug wires, ground it to prevent any crosstalk from getting to your computer, and you would get a signal on the computer. However, you can't always do that. Nowadays, vehicles don't have this set up anymore. Now they're using coil-on plugs. They look similar to this. As you can tell, there's really nowhere good I can put this. It doesn't really clamp on there anywhere useful. So we had to do something else. This is where we come into using these plates. In class, I show students making, how to make these plates. They're very simple. You take the inductive clamp, clamp it around the post that we welded on, and simply go from coil to coil on the vehicle laying it on top to try to find which one is misfiring or which pattern is different. Well, some vehicles you can do that on and some vehicles you can't. A vehicle such as this behind me, this is a Ford Fusion, and it's so well insulated, this won't pick up the signal. We have to do something different. To accomplish the goal on this car, we, we built something like this. It's simply a piece of wire with an alligator clip on one end. We made a lasso on the other end, and in the middle we have a nut and a bolt. Well, what we do with this, we're going to take this loop and put this loop right along lasso the bottom part of the coil. We're going to run the wire straight up next to the coil so we can reinstall this into the vehicle because of course the vehicle does need to be running for this to, to work. We, th we will then ground our clip. We're going to take our inductive clamp and we're going to clamp around the bolt that we provided. After doing that, we will crank the car, and you'll see a, a, a pattern here on the scope. Let's go over to the car now. I'll install this, and we'll see what happens. So we're back with the vehicle, and we're going we're gonna to install this loop that I made. Let me show you how this does. I've already loosened this bolt right here. Makes it a lot easier. Just like I demonstrated before, we're going to take this coil and we're going to loop the bottom of this right around the bottom of the coil. There we are. Reinstall that in the motor, as you can see. I'm not going to put the bolt in it at this time, but I don't want to crimp it too much. I'm just going to leave it like this and see how that works. I am going to make sure, though, that we take this ground and we ground it somewhere. So I'm going to take a bolt on the motor, ground that. Now we simply take our secondary ignition leads, remember this one, this goes on the bolt right here. We also have a ground strap here too. What this is for is if in case you have a leakage through the boot on this coil, you don't want 40,000 volts going all the way through your meter and into your computer. That gets kind of expensive. So what this is going to do by grounding this out, it's going to discharge that spark right to ground and you'll be safe that way and your equipment will be as well. Okay, that's all there is to the setup. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to fire up the vehicle, we're going to take a look at the, at the oscilloscope screen, and I'm going to show you the waveform that we picked up. Here we have the waveform we obtained from the vehicle behind me. As you can see here, this is the firing line. This is actually the spark bridging the gap, how much voltage it takes for the spark to bridge the gap between the electrode and the ground. Right here next to it, you see the burn line. This is the period of time it takes for that spark to stay lit to actually combust the fuel and air in the combustion chamber. When it's done igniting the fuel, it shuts off and you have a little bit of residual power left over in the system and it just simply oscillates until it dissipates. That's pretty normal. This is a normal occurring event. This is a normal looking waveform. However, uh, it must be noted that you can use secondary ignition wave patterns to diagnose many, many things in a car. Not just uh, spark plugs that are fouled out or 
bad compression readings, but you can do other things as well. We're going to talk about that in another video. Be sure to come check out our YouTube page for other videos that you might be interested in as well. Can you hear that? Can you feel that? That's doing what you love and turning it into a career. If you love cars and trucks and working with your hands, then you need to know about JTEC, a new automotive, diesel, and commercial truck driving school you'll want to check out. JTEC is driving the next generation of under the hood and over the road technicians by building a top flight automotive and transportation facility on the south side of Jacksonville. Step on it. Call JTEC at 855 438 8069 or go to JTEC.org. JTEC, driving futures forward.